We're calling this part of the video Registering an Organ Piece. So I'm going to act as the guinea pig in this Takata <laughs> by Dietrich uh, Buxehuda. And uh, Charles Tompkins is going to give me some input of what, what he would do to register this piece so you can have a closer t look at how this works. Okay. All right. So just to review quickly, when you speak of registration uh, on an organ, you're referring to the stops, which can also be called registers. So the word registration means the stops you have chosen to play on and by extension, the uh, art and the craft of choosing which stops you play on for a particular piece. Now, registration is a very intensive and very complex subject because the organ um, has developed differently in different ways during its long history, which dates well back to the Middle Ages. Uh, in different historical periods, in different countries, organs have different types of stop lists. They have, uh, they speak with different accents, as it were. So you have to take that all into account while at the same time working with the specific instrument that you're playing on. No two organs are alike. You may be playing on an organ with two keyboards and 20 stops, or you might be playing on an organ with four keyboards and 100 stops. You might be playing on an organ such as this Hartness organ at uh, Furman, uh, Furman's Daniel Chapel that has um, essentially an eclectic approach, some slight French leanings, uh, but then again, another time you may be playing on an instrument that is really in a strict 18th or even 17th century North German style, or you might be playing on an instrument that is very much in a 19th century French style. And they all have real differences uh, in their stop lists and in the way the stops are voiced and so on and so forth. So you have to take all these things into account, and the idea is to try to reproduce uh, what the composer had in mind. And even that can be a little tricky sometimes because some composers are very specific about what stops they want used. Uh, other composers don't say much of anything. And ironically enough, one of the composers who falls into the latter category, not saying very much of anything about registration, is none other than the greatest composer for the organ, Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, there are very few specific registration markings in his music anywhere. Now, we know from other uh, indicators, uh, a, a lot of them, what registrations very likely might have been used. But specific indications mostly come in organ music in the French repertory. French composers are very, very uh, specific about the exact stops they want. So here we're talking about a North German composer by the name of Dietrich Buxtehude, uh, who lived from 1637 to uh, 1707. And the piece in question is a Toccata in F major, and it's uh, really, in, if I remember the piece, it's in two sections. It's more like a prelude and fugue uh, than some of these uh, North German Toccatas are. Uh, and so when it comes to North German organ music, here again, the composers don't usually specify specific stops, but a lot of times you can deduce what they might have used in terms of registrations from the style of the music at any particular time. Having said that, though, there's a great deal of latitude. And recent research into North German Baroque organ music, and by recent I mean in the last couple of decades, has suggested that there's actually a lot more flexibility in terms of uh, registrational approach and potentially a lot more registration changes during the course of the piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this from the standpoint of, here I have a student, David, who is playing this piece and we're talking about how do you register this? Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at, we would want to look at the piece and see how it's structured, how many sections it has, and where the music is contrasting. Uh, in this case, you've got an opening kind of free, uh, slightly flashy section, and then a fugue, and then sort of a return to the freestyle at the very end. When you have this kind of free improvisatory style in North German Baroque uh, pieces like this, Generally, the norm has been to approach it with a 
big registration, principles, principal choruses with mixtures. And so that is going to be the point of departure here. And how you would do this would also depend on whether you want to stay on one keyboard throughout the section or whether you may want to um, uh, sometimes go to a different keyboard. And there's at least one place in this uh, opening section where I think you could do that. Um, now, as I said, you have to consider the particular instrument involved, too. A lot of times, one of the first things I'd say for a section like this is the pedal is going to be principal 1684. On this organ, I'm actually using a contrabass in the pedal just because the room eats up bass frequencies, and I really want as much bass as I can get. So 1684. And to that, we might have the 16-foot reed. Now, that's a possibility, but that is one big womp and stomp and 16-foot reed. The tone of it is actually that of a Baroque posauna, but its function in the organ is that's the big 16-foot pedal reed for the entire organ, whether you're playing Buxtehude or Vierne or Rager or Messian. And for Baroque music, sometimes, go ahead and play the game. Sometimes I think, especially with agile lines, it might be a little bit big. Here where the pedal is stationary, I think you could do it, but there's another possibility, and that is to take stops from the top keyboard, from the swell division, which is actually a French romantic division, and use those instead. So we might use, uh, go ahead and see how this sounds. Oh, sorry, I didn't have the coupler on. We're coupling swell, the top keyboard, to the pedal. Or maybe this. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards that. Um, it's a little bit less humongous than this. Or maybe both the 16 and the 8. Now, the other possibility would be to couple the positive 16-foot read down, but I have a different idea for the positive. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave the swell. We're going to use the swell for right now, coupled to the pedal. That's where we'll get our 16-foot read from. And then we're going to draw uh, what we call principal chorus with mixture on the grate. Play just a little bit of the opening. Oh, yeah, and the, oh, great, okay. the great keyboard on this organ is down at the bottom. <laughs> okay. And we might fill that out with a couple of flutes just because they're principally sounding flutes. Now, on the second line of this, no, I'm sorry, on the third line, actually, no, it's on the next page. Haven't taught this piece for a while. Okay, so this is the next to last measure, the bottom line. Go ahead and play this on the grade and just just play. With the pedal. Yeah. yeah. No, just stay on the same. Okay. So David was asking me whether you should move up. You have the same chords repeated. Um, twice, a measure worth of chords repeated twice, and then two sets of downward arpeggios. So the question is, do you stay on the same sound for those, or do you change manuals? And maybe the second manual is an echo, or maybe it's just a different sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing now. Let's, let's leave the pedal out for the time being, but just start on that same keyboard, and then go to the positive uh, on the repeats. Oh, hold on. Let me get, there we go. Uh, it's entirely possible that uh, it was done that way by Buxtehude, in other words, changing manuals, but we don't know for sure. There's no indication in the music, so it's up to you. Now, the other thing we could do possibly is make make the positive a little bit more of an echo. So let's try that again. So 
this is just a very tip of the iceberg look at what might be uh, one of the issues with this opening section. The other thing would be whether you want to do this opening just on the grade, like that, or whether you might want to couple the positive here. And especially with the mixture on the positive. That's quite a bit more brilliant than uh, kind of hard playing for standing up. Now, having said all that, I have also heard people play this piece. Go ahead and play the opening. such a nice piece. I'm inclined to think that after that point, I'd probably keep it on the same registration. Hmm. Okay, But that's just a little look into what could be some of the issues. Uh, and, and you heard that when David was playing it on the smaller sound, just on the eight-foot principles, it, it has a very different effect. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, it's very nice. Now, how do you decide what to do? Well, I have this slightly heretical attitude uh, that I apply in my own registrational practice. You know what the norms were and you know a, a, as much as possible about the way it might have been done or would have been done uh, at the time that the piece was written by the composer and then you do what you want. <clears throat> and doing what you want means doing what you think sounds best on that organ. Uh, this, this is an interesting notion with registration because you could even take that to say well if you have a, an early 20th century f uh, American romantic organ like E.M. Skinner, for example, should, and you're playing, say, the Toccata and Fugue in D minor Bach, should you try to make a, quote, Baroque, unquote, registration or make it sound like one? Or should you play it maybe like people in 1910 would have played it on those sorts of organs? I am increasingly inclined to think you should play it like they might have played it in 1910 on an E.M. Skinner. You know? So, Anyway, now let's move on in this piece to the fugue. And um, David, why don't you go ahead and just play the subject? All right, so. so there's our subject. And here again, there are absolutely no indications in the music about what sound Uxuda wanted. Um, and so it could be, and I think probably statistically the majority of the time, most organists would use a sound like that that is a principal sound. In this case, principles 842 on the gray. They might have added the mixture, or they might have done something similar on the positive. this organ we have a one and a third stop in the positive that acts like a miniature mixture. Now, just on the preliminary process of registering here, well, first of all, David, which of those possibilities do you like? I like the, with the one and one third. With the Larigo, yeah. yeah. Great minds think alike. 
right? Because uh, that right now is the one that I'm inclined to do. But people who have studied this music also talk about what are called consort registrations, which um, was a registrational practice that attempted to imitate the consort idea of the Renaissance, where you had a whole series of instruments that were the same instruments, but at different pitch levels. So with a crum horn, for example, you'd have a soprano crum horn, alto crum horn, tenor crum horn, bass crum horn, or with recorder, soprano recorder, alto recorder, tenor recorder, bass recorder. And the idea is that you uh, register in such a way that every voice is sounding on the same stop, and if we had a crumb horn consort, for example, this fugue might sound like this. Okay, possibly. Hmm. Um, this organ does not really have what I would call a German Baroque eight-foot trumpet on. Many Fisks do, and, and we chose not to do one on this organ. Most of these trumpets on this organ are very harmonically bright. That's, that's uh, what we call a Dom Bedos French Baroque trumpet, and I think that would be a little jarring for something like this. Uh, it's hard to say whether you could really find a, a, a true, honest-to-goodness German Baroque trumpet sound on this instrument, but you could do something more mild. Like back to the positive with this same same passage effect. Now, the person playing really ought to be, in the end, comfortable with that. <laughs> so, so which of those do you find yourself leaning towards? I like the, the one I just played. The, with yeah. the uh, principal chords and the lyrical. Okay, yeah. so now, just to sort of summarize the rest of the piece, and then we're going to hear it all the way to the end. Yeah. Right? So I'll call out manual changes, just be ready. Okay, all right, okay? all right. <laughs> um, so this fugue goes along. Um, these fugues in the North German organ toccatas like this were generally a little shorter than, than Bach's uh, because they weren't separate pieces. They were part, uh, just a section within a larger piece. So this one goes along as a fugue, um, uh, basically stays around F major, and then towards the end, this repeated figure. You'll start hearing in chords, and this is where you're beginning to sort of get towards, towards the end. So what I'm going to do is, David and I are going to do this on the fly. My sense is that we're going to want to get back to the great as we get towards the end of the piece. It's not really that long, as you'll hear. So just be ready to go to the great, and then I'm going to make this up on the fly, meaning I'm going to be flying around changing stops uh, while we're going. Um, I'm actually going to... Let's, let's beef this up a little bit. In the beginning, okay. So that's good? Yeah, and we yeah. might have to stop after the Takata just because I don't have this set up on any pistons. Okay, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can, well, actually, that would just be that. So I'll, I'll be running around doing stuff. All right, all right. Um, let's get a little more sound around here. Yeah, what I do with this swell sometimes, because these are so brassy, I, I close the box just a tiny bit, not all the way, but just, uh, yeah, right, just okay. a bit. It, it takes a 
takes a little bit of the edge off it. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Right, do you have that running, the camera down there? Yep. It's on the right. foot? Yep. Okay, all right. So, great. Plus and then let's, let's do the so. echoes, I would say, on the... We have 5.30 left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. We'll play fast. <laughs>
uh, just one possibility for how you would register that, but it is based essentially on uh, 18th century, late 17th century North German registrational principles. Two seconds to spare. All oh, right, Two that was seconds. great. Boy, am I a natural <laughs> one.